My life changed dramatically after I was diagnosed with cancer. I just had to put myself in front of God and say, do with me as you wish. When I faced my own mortality, it made me realize how much God had given me. A great opportunity to be an obstetrician and bring life into the world as a physician. The incredible opportunity to act in Persona Christi, to try to be Jesus to the world. And looking on that crucifix, I realized that a God who would do that for me, that is a God that we can trust completely. I went to the University of Kentucky College of Medicine, and I wanted to be a doctor my whole life. There's nothing else that I ever wanted to be. And one night in my third year of medical school, I delivered my first baby, and I have never had an experience like that in the world, and I just knew that that's what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. I went out and did private practice in Eastern Kentucky. I was out uh, making all this money and very, very successful practice was going wonderful. Just something wasn't right. I felt like there was a hole in my soul. And I was sitting at my desk one day trying to figure all of this out. And I heard this inner voice that said, Steve, go see a Catholic priest. So I jumped in my car and I went to St. Michael's Catholic Church in Paintsville, Kentucky. I pulled up and there was a guy washing his car and it was a priest. I told him my whole story, that I have everything that I ever worked for. Everything was going great, but there was something missing. And he said, uh, well, tell me, doctor, are you, are you going to church? And I said, no, sir. He said, are, are you praying? I said, no, sir. He said, are you reading the Bible? I said, no, sir. He said, that's where we need to start. It was this peace that came over me, and I knew that I was supposed to be a Catholic. So I joined the RCIA program and I came into the Catholic Church in 1997. After three years, I felt God was calling me out of medicine and into the priesthood. Now I am pastor at Holy Spirit Parish, the Newman Center, right in the middle of the University of Kentucky. Sometimes you can only hear God so I minister both to a parish and to the college students on campus. And it's an awesome, awesome assignment. What I mostly do for the kids is spiritual direction and spiritual counseling, and that goes from early in the afternoon till all hours of the night. One day I noticed I started getting real fatigued easily. I'd been walking five or six miles a day, and then just all of a sudden I just started getting tired and fatigued. Getting through the Mass was just very, very tedious and hard on me. Even after Mass, when I would greet all the prisoners, I could hardly stand up. I was not a good patient, so I kind of denied all this for a little bit. And uh, finally, one of the parishioners got a physician that I knew to call me and says, I hear you're not feeling well, I want you to come in. So I went in and saw this physician and had my colonoscopy on New Year's Eve. They brought the pictures in. So I myself looked at the pictures before the doctor came in. I said, oh my gosh, I've got cancer. The doctor came in and said, yes, you do have cancer. And I think it's probably going to be metastatic the way it looks. The first thing I thought, oh my gosh, I'm going to die. Am I ready to meet our Lord? And of course the answer was no. 
because I had a blood clot in my lungs, it was too dangerous to take me to surgery. So they decided to give me three months of chemotherapy. Then I had surgery and then three more months of chemotherapy. I think one of the most difficult things was not just the pain of surgery, but taking chemotherapy, you just feel bad all the time. Your stomach is always upset, you're always tired. I mean, you never have a day where you feel well. To go through all that physical suffering, that was horrible, I hope I don't have to do that again. But what was really, really difficult for me was going as a patient and not the physician. As a physician, you have this idea that you're in control and as a patient, you know, you're just kind of helpless. I had counseled so many people when very difficult things in their life came. I told them only Jesus can make sense of all of this. And so anytime somebody was having a very difficult time, I'd have them meditate on a crucifix. And then I was involved in this situation, so I've got to practice what I preach. I've got to do what I've asked people to do. And as I meditated on that beautiful, beautiful crucifix, I just realized how much God loves me. I knew that God is a suffering God and that Christ would enter into our suffering. I had a partner in this suffering. I was never alone. It made me realize, God, you love me this much. I can trust you completely. So after that original kind of scared what's going to happen to me, I just knew good things would come of it, whatever that would be, live or die. So I just started looking for the good things that were going to happen. One of the major things that happened during my cancer was that I became united with other people that were suffering. So many people are wounded or going through a difficult time. It can be a very difficult world. So people come with all kinds of problems, relationship problems, physical problems, health problems. And I always try to get them to realize how much they are loved and start looking for those lights in the darkness. And in some ways, as I tried to unite myself to them and become in solidarity with the suffering Christ, it became so obvious that God allows negative things, evil things to happen. And our answer to that is God allows us to participate in the redemptive suffering of Christ. St. Paul says in Colossians 1.24 that we Christians have the opportunity to make up what is lacking in the sufferings of Christ. And it's not that Christ's redemptive act on the cross was not enough for the salvation of the whole world. The only thing that is missing from the suffering of Christ is our participation in it when we suffer. What great dignity we have to be co-redeemers of the world in such a small, minute way, to be able to participate in the redemptive suffering of Christ it gives meaning to suffering. So all the suffering, the surgery, the chemo, the emotional suffering, I just offered that suffering with his and was able to participate in Christ's redemptive suffering for the world. The chemotherapy was very successful and the tumor had shrunk to such a great degree we knew that the cancer was being treated it's not quite been two years yet, but so far I'm cancer free. And I just put my hands in the hands of God and I'm here as long as he wants me to be here to praise and love and serve him.
Before I was diagnosed with cancer, I knew intellectually that God would bring great good from it, but it had to go from my intellect to my heart. Now I came to know it in such a more intimate way that God can only love, God can only give.